Hi, it's Lorna, and today I'm going to show you how to dot paint. Dot painting is pretty simple, and you can use a variety of tools for this. So I have here a paintbrush. I'm going to be using both ends of my paintbrush today, particularly the back end, an eraser. Um, so this is a mechanical pencil, and I'm just using the eraser. It does need to be a new eraser, and it probably won't erase after you've done, you're done with it. Um, this is a dotting tool. Um, you can get them in ceramics. You can get them with like paper quilling. You can get them for specifically dot painting. They have a variety of different sizes. It just has a little ball at the end. See the little ball? Um, and that is great for dot painting. But anything that is either circular or round will work great for this. Then I have some acrylic paint. Um, these are just little tubes. This paint is pretty old, so you'll see that this blue is a little bit chunky. Um, and that's okay, it'll still work for what I'm using, especially because I am diluting it with water. So I'm just putting a little bit of paint in a reusable container. You wanna use a little cup or something like that, because if you use it on a paper plate or on a palette, then um, it will run a bit so if you use that if you see that I'm putting a little blue dot with just the paint it's making little peaks and this paint holds its shape and you can see all the ridges and all of that in the paint so the goal with this for dot painting is that we don't want to see any of the paint texture in the paint so I'm just going to be using a pipette you can use just water it's a little bit easier for me to use the pipette because of my camera setup and getting in there pouring water is just going to be a mess for me so I'm just mixing a little bit of water in and keep in mind that when you're mixing the water in less is more you can always add more water if you need but you can't take water away um, the consistency that you're trying to get to is of a really thin yogurt. If you have just like Liquitex or Apple Barrel or you know those craft paints that come in the little tubes like folk art, then what you want to do is not water it down because it's probably already at the consistency that it needs to be. So it needs to be at the consistency of that watery craft paint. This is heavy body acrylic, and this is what um, I would recommend for doing most fine art pieces. You can use different mediums to thin it out, or you can use it thick. Um, it's just a little bit more pigmented, so it has more color per square inch than the craft paint, which is why it's a little bit better in my opinion. But for this, we're watering it down, so really it doesn't matter whether you use the craft paint or not. So you can use um, gloss mediums or matte mediums for this as well instead of water. That is a little bit more expensive, but it will extend the drying time. So here it is with the pencil. Nice little perfect circles. And the reason why I have different tools here is because you want to have a different variety of shapes so I have a little sharpie marker here that's gonna work great um, you just don't want to use anything that will be damaged by wa water or acrylic paint um, my sharpie marker I can just wipe off the bottom and it's no big deal if you let it dry on there you know you're gonna have a sharpie with some paint on there so just make sure that you clean it off um, before putting it back um, you should just be able to run it under some water and it'll be fine so I'm gonna mix these paints to the appropriate consistency as well. So I'm putting a little bit different amount of paint in each one. Some have a little bit more, some have a little bit less. I'm doing that because it doesn't matter how much paint you use and it, you just want to add water until you get it to be thin. And when you know the thickness of the paint, you'll be able to put it on the paper and it will make a dome shape. It's not going to have any little peaks or lumps or bumps in it anymore. So what I would do is I would add a little bit of water, test it on your paper, see what kind of mark it makes, if it makes a little peak. So I'm gonna test this one. 
That one has just a little bit of a lump. So I know that I need to add more water. And I'm just adding a little bit more water. And then I'm gonna test it some more. So that's all there is to this is with the water is just making sure that there is no peaks. If there is a peak, sometimes it might dissipate within seconds. So just watch your paint. And as your paint begins to dry, you may need to add more water. So if you're taking a long time, like working for 30 minutes, you're definitely gonna need to add more water to your paint or whatever you're using, like a mixing medium, in order for it to remain the consistency that you want. That goes for craft paint as well. Craft paint does dry out. And if you notice that your craft paint is starting to dry out while you're doing your dot painting, you may need to add some liquid to it. This orange was a little bit too orange for my taste, a little bit too close to the other orange that I have in the cup. So what I'm doing is adding a little bit of yellow to make it a yellow orange so that it goes a little bit more with the color scheme, which means I have more paint, which means I need more water. So this one is definitely got some little domes here. So it's good to go. So I'm showing you there that it has a few little lumpies in there. So this is what we want. We want a nice smooth dome and the orange one has some um, little bumps. So what I can do is take it back and add a little bit of water. And that's all there is to this method. It's just thinning out your paint so that you can do dots and using different tools to get those dots. Um, some other items that you might want to try in your household are different types of markers. Um, you could even use like a, the bottom of a cup and make a giant circle. That would be really cool. Um, the more paint that you put on your the end of whatever you're using, the higher the dome will be. If you don't want high domes, then you can press a little bit harder and use a little less paint and it will give you the shallow dot here. So this one is much better consistency, this orange one. So I'm gonna mix this last paint and then we're gonna do a dot painting. Okay, so I have a new sheet of paper here and I have all of my tools. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from biggest to smallest. So I'm gonna find um, my markers and my pencils and all those things with all the different size tips. And I'm gonna go from biggest to smallest. So I'm just gonna lay them out from biggest to smallest. So what I wanna do is I wanna lay out my colors in the direction that I want them to go. So I've done that, I want my um, magenta, then I'm going to do this dark orange, then the light orange, then my blue. So I'm just going to dip and dot. And you want to do a dip for every dot. I know it seems a little bit time consuming, but once you get in the pattern and the rhythm of this, it's less, um, less tedious. So you want to make sure that you're holding your marker semi straight. Mine is at a little bit of an angle, but it's working. Um, if you do it at too much of an angle though, or if you dip your paint too far in and then do it at too much of an angle, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna skew your dot so it's gonna be more of an oval, or it might even have just a bit, a trail of paint on the side where you've tilted it. So try and keep it straight up and down. So I've just done a few of these magenta dots. Then I'm gonna go on to my pencil. If you're into dot painting, I recommend just having a pencil, a mechanical pencil. Um, you can use a number two pencil, anything with a clean eraser that's never been used will work for this. So if you see any sheer parts in your dots, go ahead and just dot right back over top of those. 
You can also take a little toothpick and kind of fill those in if you don't want to add any more paint. So that's all there is to it. You're just going to dot whatever you want. And you can do this on rocks. I've seen this on kindness rocks. You can do this in a wave shape. You can do them closer together and do, um, you know, some pixel art. There's all sorts of things that you can do with dot painting. You can make mandalas. You can do them in different shapes like circles or hearts. Really, it's a fun thing to learn and fun thing to do. And I hope that you try it out and that you make your own dot painting. I think this one would be really fun to cut out and make into a fish just because it looks like little scales and the colors. But whatever you make, if you do make something, go ahead and give us a shout out on our Instagram page, W-O-A underscore mixed. And um, we would love to see what you make. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and have a wonderful day.